All right, guys, we have details for the new Xpeng or Xiaopeng X9 eRev. I've heard this is coming to Australia. Can't say for sure, but I've heard it is. I know it's coming to various countries around the world, including Malaysia and Europe. And I've been saying for a while now that I think if you're about to buy a plug-in hybrid, you shouldn't do so because there are various new eRevs and a few newer plug-in hybrids with much better specifications, much longer EV only battery range, much faster charging. I'm talking 350 to 500 kilowatt fast charging. You know, honestly, these specs make a lot of the existing plug-in hybrids that are on the market, they make them completely obsolete. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, and if you haven't already subscribed, you can do so by just clicking subscribe. It's really quite easy and it supports the channel. Please also like the video because that helps with the algorithms. Also, make sure you subscribe to our newsletter. I'll put a link in the description below. X9. I personally think that the best value electric MPV in the world, fully electric, is the X9. I've driven a few other electric MPVs that have been really good, but I think the X9 is the best in, when it comes to value for money. And the eRev is actually extremely good as well. If you need a vehicle that can do, oh, I don't know. I mean, I guess if you're doing incredibly long road trips or towing or whatever, this could be an option for you. The X9 eRev gets a 63.3 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery pack and a 60 liter fuel tank. So not a big fuel tank. Anyhow, Total range is 1,602 kilometers. That's CLTC. WLTP range would probably be about 1,300 kilometers. Battery only range though. To me, that's the important part because you want to be driving this thing as an EV and just maybe 1% of the time using it as a non-EV, you know, as a using the gas tank 1% of the time because you don't want that fuel sitting there for, you know, longer than a few months. Battery only range is said to be 430 kilometers. So 430 kilometers of EV only range. And it has 350 kilowatt fast charging for the battery, meaning you can charge the battery from 10 to 80% in probably around about 12 to 13 minutes. Very, very fast charging, completely different to all of the existing plug-in hybrids on the market today. Now guys, I should mention, this is a seven seat MPV, right? Three rows and it uses a 1.5 liter turbocharged range extender engine. Not a lot of power, it's got 110 kilowatt, but the purpose of this engine is simply to recharge the battery. It never actually powers the wheels, and it's only gonna be used when the battery starts to run low. So really the idea is you actually never would use the engine in dry, any kind of driving, unless you get to that point where maybe you've hit 380 kilometers, 400 kilometers of battery use, potentially then the engine would start to turn on, but it's optimized for efficiency. All it needs to do is recharge that battery. So it's got really no other purpose. In, in addition to that, it's got an 800 volt high voltage platform and 5C super fast charging capabilities. Now I believe that's 350 to 400 kilowatt fast charging. Pure electric range is actually not 430 kilometers. I got that wrong. It's 452 kilometers. So that's CLTC, meaning probably about 380 kilometers of WLTP range. The design on the outside of this car, very, very similar, very similar to the design of the EV only version. It's slightly different. The front bumper has a closed grille with vertically arranged air vents that are meant to help to cool the engine if it needs it. Now the lower part of the front bumper integrates a dual segment heat dissipation opening with an active grill. And the, the idea of the active grill is it's closed when the engine is not being used and that helps aerodynamics. But then when you need the engine, it can open and that can allow airflow to get in to the vehicle. Dimensions, how big is the X9? It's actually a pretty big car. It's 5,316 millimeters long, 5.3 meters long, meaning it's actually bigger than a Kia Carnival. And it's got a lot of interior space because it's an EV. Now guys, you can see here in the photos, the fuel filler cap is on one side uh, and the charging is on the other side. And when the car has been driven using the battery and the motor, 
So once you've hit, say, 400 kilometers of range and the car starts, starts to use kick, the motor starts to actually kick in, it uses 6.4 liters per 100 kilometers in terms of fuel. So that's the fuel efficiency, 6.4. Real world is probably going to be closer to maybe 7.5 liters per 100 kilometers. So that's per 60 miles. Um, you're going to be using about, about probably 7.5 liters of fuel for every 60 miles of travel. Solar and batteries. I've got a 50 kilowatt hour battery here. And I've got a big solar array. So I pay $0 for electricity. That's including charging my electric car. Resync Solar is the company that I used. I'll put a link to them in the description below. So yeah, when you, I mean, realistically, it's still a pretty efficient vehicle when you're using the motor. But the point is to say 99% of the time, you wouldn't even need to do that because you've got, you know, 300, at least 350 kilometers of range on the battery alone plus the ability to charge that battery at around 350 to 400 kilowatt charging speeds. So yeah, I mean, if you're in the market for, a, like I said, a hybrid, this is a really good vehicle. But if you're not, I recommend not buying this car and getting the electric version of this car because there's an, there's an EV version coming. It's already on sale, in fact, in various markets around the world, the electric version, but there'll also be this e-rev version too. Guys, what are your thoughts? Which one do you think is a better option? Now, the E-Rev um, range, obviously, it's got more range, but not as much battery-only range. So the electric version of this, the fully electric version, has about 600 kilometers of WLTP range. I don't actually think you'd ever need more than that. I think that's more than enough, 600 kilometers. And it also has one of the coolest features that I've ever seen, Three rows of seats, right? But that third row of seats, unlike some cars where the third row just kind of sits up and it's in your way, the third row, it folds flat down into the ground using an electric button. So that's one of the coolest, one of the coolest features I've ever seen. And then you can, you know, use that flat floor space to put stuff in, you know, you put surfboards in the back, put suitcases, whatever it is. So I think it's um, a really cool electric MPV. And like I said, the tech in this thing's incredible. It's got three Turing AI chips for, I believe, a total power, system power of 2,000 tops, meaning more AI computing, compute power than any other car currently manufactured in the world, except for other XP models, of course. Let me know your thoughts again in the comments. Bye-bye.